Spray paint, spray paint, spray paint. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video. We are doing another portrait with a few stencils, a bit of spray paint, a bit of acrylic and we are starting off with her hair. Um, I've done the base of Dingo to give it this cool little sort of uh, skin tone which is a MTN95. Now I'm going in with a little bit of blue which I believe is tulip blue, um, a bar a molotov and then a bit of this petrol. Uh, petrol blue which is a very cool like dark denim and that's for her denim dungarees and then the good old faithful pebble uh, this portrait is a woman lying on her side with a tear in her eye um, i'll come on to the reasons for the tear in the eye the crying woman was very famous with for by Liechtenstein, and this is something i was very much referencing here um, as you can see i'm going in with a the paintbrush there just to tidy a few little bits up um, the crying woman was mainly became quite popular in the should I come back to that? Yeah, I'll come back to that, that sentence in a minute. Let's uh, go here. We are doing the face, the first shadow of the face, and this is in a color called Montserrat, and this is an MTN 94 again, um, and I'm using bits of wood to block off from overspraying, um, and then this is Tulip Dark, I think, to uh, give the shadows and the, um, the uh, what do you call them, the strings of hair? That doesn't sound right, but you know what I mean. Uh, and then I'm just spraying a little bit of paint onto a brush to fill it in, um, just to get it all looking a bit better because I've oversprayed there. Look at that overspray on the top. Terrible, but you know, you can fix everything with a nice brush. Um, and then we're going in and doing the highlights here, the lips and the sort of the, the furrow, the brow um, on the nose, uh, the bridge of the nose. That's in uh, Jamia Brown. And those lips are in, oh, I don't remember, a red maybe brick red, can't quite remember. And then I'm going in to do this detail here with um, Sequoia, Sequoia, I can never say it, which is a Sequoia brown. And now we're gonna have all of the base with the spray. And that gives me the opportunity to get in there and start adding all my comic book effects and details and what have you. And I'm doing it with the Posca here because I was worried about that wasn't working quite well. Um, so I went in a bit early just to test it out. Um, here I'm going with a brush. And that is with a um, sign writer's brush, which has got like a long tip in it. Again, can't remember what they're called. Fountain of information. Um, and this is a Mars Black. Uh, I believe it's a golden one. Um, yeah, so the the Crying Woman, Liechtenstein made it very famous, but also you see it a lot in comic book art of the early 60s, late 50s. And I believe it came in because of the comic book code, which came in to stop these sexual images being on the front of um, comic books. So to show emotion, um, the female crime became something that was very much in those so romantic comics. You, know, you didn't see it so much in Marvel and DC. It was the, um, the other types of comics at the time. Um, so this is where the origin of this comes from. And um, this is something I was quite passionate to do is have this very thoughtful face and this very comic book pop art style. Um, as you can see, I'm going in with uh, Posca pens to do all the cross hatching and get everything sort of nice and tight and rigid. Um, and then with a the brush for the white. I find if you use different materials, different materials give you different effects. So spray paint, very fast to cover. You get a, a continuous cover, which isn't all the same color, um, but it can be a bit flat. Um, acrylic, depending on how much water's in it and depending on what color you're using, it, it can be very different on the, the color scale. Oh, this is interesting. It's been a while since I did this one, so I can't remember. Um, so I'm masking her all off because I want to do this background. Um, so with frog tape, which is what that green tape is, um, that's gone all over, which will give it a blocker. And then I thought I'd put this nice shot in there so you can see a bit of my studio because I don't really show my studio very much. So here it is. What a dump. <laughs> Um, an absolute mess and then I'm spraying around this outside in this nice purple uh, grape purple I think it's called um, it was a purple I just found I didn't even know I had it in the collection I thought this is a nice one I'll use this so then we uh, take off the tape take off the masking and there she is the uh, the crying woman um, but I'm not calling her crying woman I'm calling her I wish that was the concept of this painting is I wish I was thinking about when I was painting her that she is wishing for something with a tear in her eye whether that be good or bad that's what I want the viewer to add to it um here you go there's a little oversight of how she's looking um she's just on a board at the moment i haven't got on a stretch of bars um she's just stretched over a board um board and then i decided i want to put this like little comic book moon in the background very tmnt very batman and i tried doing it with a string and a pencil couldn't get it right for some reason tried doing it with tape still couldn't get it right tried a bin lid still couldn't get it right went downstairs ready to the kitchen and got myself a nice bowl there it is <laughs> um, so just drawing around the bowl to get this moon in the background 
and then I'm painting it in. Here I'm using um, some Little Green, which is a household paint, very expensive household paint, but it's got a really nice effect to it and really goes on nicely. Probably it does dry out very quickly in the tubs. Um, and then I'm putting in some of these clouds. These clouds were very much ripped off from uh, the comic books of the time, uh, Warhol, Lichtenstein, Deface, all these type of guys who do all this. And so I'm, it's an amalgamation. It's a postmodern painting where I'm bringing in elements from everywhere to create a new element. Um, now I thought I'd slow the video down a bit, so all relax. Um, this is the cross hatch, and I can't normally very much show this. Normally very much show this? That's not a sentence. Um, I can't really show this so much sometimes because it goes by so fast. Um, it's just these little ticks, these little marks that give you shadow or make something 3D. Now you can do this with a brush, and I have done it with a brush, um, and I do on a much bigger scale or a much, much bigger scale. I use a, um, a spray paint. Um, here I'm using a very tiny Posca pen um, with some, uh, I think it may be Molotov ink inside of it. Um, and then just slowly going over the the uh, lines to give it the shadow. Um, this is something that was very prominent in the 90s comic book comic book art. So here I'm referencing the 60s comic books all the way to the 90s. And um, the 90s comic books were the ones I was obsessed with. Therefore, cross-hatching was very much part of me learning how to draw was cross-hatching. So... Um, it's something that I tried to get away from, and as you get older, you kind of embrace the things you love. And um, I love cross hatching; I just find it really powerful. Um, it gives it a, a dynamic feel without taking away the simplicity of um, pop art or comic book art. What else is there I can say? Um, this painting is one on a canvas, which I will be doing on a wall um, before I do walls or murals. Um, I try to do a version on a canvas so I can iron out all the kinks and mistakes I may make. Um, so this one is going to be on a wall, which I am painting in a few days from recording this. Um, and there are things I learned from this. The big thing I learned is once I finish this video, those tears are too white. So I paint them blue in the last photograph. Uh, you'll see they're blue because the white, when I stood back, was too glaring. It took away too much. Um, the other things I learned it was I didn't need anywhere near as much detail in the hair as I originally doodled on a piece of paper. Uh, there's a lot more black, and the black is powerful, much more powerful than having lots of strands of hair. Um, sometimes with certain forms of art, certain styles of art, you put in a lot of detail because you start studying something. Um, yet when you put that detail in and then you're standing back, it looks silly. You don't see that detail. You don't see the detail of someone's eyelashes if you're 20 feet away from them. You only see it when you're 5 feet away from them. Um, so sometimes you have to take out some detail to add more to the painting. Um, getting near the end of the cross section here, I'm just doing little tiny bits. It's just that little, the nicks and here and there. Um, the Posca pens, they match quite well with Mars Blacks. So if you have a Mars Black, those paints um, blend pretty well. Um, but they can look different in different light. Um, but anyway, this is roughly work finished. I wish um, this painting, uh, I wish is this painting and there she is this melancholy hopeful sad pop art comic book amalgamation painting reference in the 60s the 50s and the 90s when i was a wee lad and uh yeah i'm really happy with this one and i love the amalgamation of all the stars i don't think looking at this you could tell it was a stencil painting you could tell it was a freehand painting it's just a painting and that's the point it doesn't matter what you do or what you use to get there just do it because if you have a concept or an idea just do it and see what happens um thank you for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it um i'll see you in the next one good bye <laughs> tell me what you wish for i wish for a million subscriptions bye